<laughs> wow, that tickled you, huh? <laughs> What's going on, Cinepals? I am Jabby Kawai, joined by a Char Kirk. What's up? We are watching Honest Trailers, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Wow! You played bamboozled. Well, you guys, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications. Pretty please, vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Why? Subscribe and upvoting. Subscribe to Screen Junkies. There's a link in the description below. If you want to click on that, give the original upvote. Subscribe to them from there. How did you like Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania? I thought it was Zangief thumbs. Yeah, as the kids are saying, it was mid. It was mid? Yes. Oh, that should come oh, with a flash the, warning. A little, From the that was actually comedy. smart. It was yeah. a smart move because they actually used to just do it small in the past, and it just looked like a mistake. Yeah. And then I realized later, oh, that's why they did it. Sending yeah. hidden messages to children that only your most conservative uncle can decipher. And the director of Back to the Future, The Ride. Get that away! Uh, the Ride. Uh, no way. Comes a sequel that ditches the low stakes appeal of Ant Man in favor of an infinite loop of Kang movies. Yeah. So, Jonathan Majors plays all of them? Too late to change that in post, huh? <laughs> Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Yeah. In a world where the same effects team has to balance this and Wakanda forever at the same time, comes a theatrically released collection of storyboards where every actor looks copy pasted into their scenes. Reacts to. I disagree with that. I watched it on a big screen, and to me, it looked pretty darn no, good. No, it did. It did look good, but I think the point he's making is that, like, just the actors seem to just always be in the same position. Okay. Reacts to absolutely nothing real. Right. It's hard to do this and type of acting. And wanders around a stomach-churning world of reddish-brown pond water. Come on. They spent two hundred million dollars on this, and it still looks like Gritty's colonoscopy. Scott Lang is a famous author now, or at least famous enough to leave all his day one homies behind. Back it up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All you gonna do is we, we, we just back it up, huh? That's it. Back it up. <laughs> now he just wants to be a good dad because hopefully the third Cassie's the charm. Cassie Lang is the MCU's fifth canonical child science genius. Your daughter built a subatomic Hubble telescope in a basement doing what any girl her age would do in San Francisco, woke stuff. You shrank a cop car? What was I supposed to do, look the other way? Hope has returned with nothing new to offer besides her tactical hobbit hair. Janet Van Dyne is back, <laughs> and then we hit all the quantum sex she had in the quantum realm. I had no idea. I know, it's, we'll talk later. She never said anything about you. Well, I don't think I would have told my kid either. <laughs> Wild stuff. I had needs. Oh my God. And Michael Douglas is never too stoned to wander around and talk about ants for a paycheck. Science with ants and science. <sighs> this just makes me nostalgic for that Ant-Man 1 promo. Ants. <laughs> ants. <laughs> this is the thing. Ant-Man. And Michael Douglas has said that if he were to do another Ant-Man movie, he would have to get killed off. That's it. That's the extent of my oh. thought there. Like, because there were people who who felt that he was basically phoning but, it in. Yeah. Which, if he did, I didn't actually notice. That wasn't my problem. I think the real problems distracted me so much that everything they've mentioned thus far didn't really phase me in the slightest. The plot issues yeah. and some of the side characters yeah. that never really made a difference to the story. All that distracted me way more than anything they mentioned. They said something really astute right at the beginning of the video, which was like they decided to trade in the low stakes of Ant-Man, which is what we really enjoyed in the first two sure. movies, which is like in the grand scheme of things, it's just fun. There's, It's not like yeah. end of the world stuff. And then here it's like, oh no, it's basically just a vehicle to get us prepared for the, the higher stake stuff that's happening. Truly the most honest trailer of them all. Journey into the quantum realm and join our heroes on a desperate search for a reason to make more MCU movies as we all trudge through a half-assed orb heist fetch quest that's just an excuse to set up the next big villain, right. him. You left all of us with him. He's looking for you. They are talking about Kang, right? Not for me. 
And not from him. He's the future. Yeah, we met him in Loki. You don't have to be coy about the name. All for him. It's not a big reveal. He told us who he was. He's in the cold open. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Jonathan Majors dusts off his best Shakespeare in the Park voice. Yeah. That's what conquerors do. As this once powerful. <laughs> He was giving a really Shakespearean performance. I said this. I said this in our review. He felt really like, you know, theater. <laughs> wow, that tickled you, huh? <laughs> Shakespeare in the park. It really felt like that, though. When I'm wa- when I was watching it, Jonathan Major stood out as one of the things I didn't like in this movie, which surprised me because I like him otherwise. From the first time I saw him in Loki, I was blown away by him. And when I watched him in subsequent films, The Heart of They Fall is one of them, and then the Air Pilots Devotion. one, Devotion. Every other instance that I watched him, I enjoyed him. And here, it just was a lot of things where I, I was like, "That's an interesting." choice I guess and then the stuff at the end that looked like an SNL squ- sketch squetch. Yeah. that whole thing looked just like wrong I no it was that. it was really really big as this once powerful being who refuses to accept he's been cancelled it's never over and choose scenery like a guy who knows that he's going away for a while so he better stretch each line as long as possible what are you going to do And time. <laughs> Win. <laughs> Along for the run. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm just laughing because you're laughing. <laughs> Because uh, I was but so yeah. mad. I was so mad at his performance in this movie. I was just so irritated. I'm like, stop, stop sounding like Captain Kirk, dude. You know what? Like, because I was thinking as I was watching him, I was like, basically, he's doing all the things that I was taught in drama school to do for Shakespeare. If there are monosyllabic words, you stretch them out. You can do for more gravitas. So like, win you know like he did but if it's like many uh you know multiple syllables you just go over them very quickly yeah, yeah. trippingly over the words as you will well i think one of the things that bothered me about him in this particular film was how much he blinked oh blinky blinky isn't it a known thing if you're trying to show intimidation or make someone feel intimidated by your character you don't blink yes because blinking shows a lack of confidence or weakness yes yeah there are enough kooky aliens to let you know a rick and morty guy wrote this one too with new characters like captain obvious everyone is disgusting. Bill Murray trying to be the fun cameo that Jeff Goldblum was, but trends closer to another Ralph Boner. Boner. Oh. <laughs> and the not ready for primetime Modoc, a floating joke <laughs> with a great warning for Illumination Studios. Do not even think about making a live action Minions movie. <laughs> so while spending time with the age. Not ready for primetime. I thought the visual yeah. effects on him looked so goofy. But like, I, I enjoyed him though. Though. There were instances like where butt. there were instances where it looked right. Towards the end, there were instances where it looked all right. But through a lot of the film, I'm like, it just looks like his face was literally stretched. stretched it didn't yeah. look right. So while spending time with the ageless Paul Rudd is always a treat. Settle in for a universe that's gotten so big, it's starting to collapse under its own weight. That should have kept Ant-Man as the refreshing after-dinner mint. Instead Aww, of a dense lore yeah. salad to prop up the next 30 of these dumb things. Uh, can we just skip to the new Fantastic Four? I'd rather watch Louis Please recap the rest of Phase 5. Oh, see, that's complicated. Because when I first... Starring... Oh. Small Rudd. Oh, Hope cute. Floats. The Masked Stinger. Ant-Man. Original Recipe. Mad Woman. Kanger Issues. The mid Blake. Oh Kanger Issues. Oh my wow. Lord. Whoa. They went there. <laughs> wow. I suppose it's like now, after all this stuff has come out, mm-hmm. it's like... Yeah, I suppose you kind of need to address that yeah. or you can make those jokes. I don't know. Kirby Sneezeway. Place. Lord Krylar with musical guest Ants. Dad Punker Henchman at my house. My house. <laughs> Broccoli Rob. <laughs> and Mr. E from the band Eels because his real life dad invented multiverse theory. 
Sad that's the Whoa. most mind-blowing thing in a $200 million movie. What? Wow. The Itty Bitty Witty Committee. <laughs> How many holes do you have? He has seven holes. <gasps> Oh, wait, are we sure there's seven? I think that eye holes would count, no? Do the mouth and butthole count as one for being connected? What about the separate peel for girls? Ugh, f*** you for making me do whole math. <laughs> so some of the initial criticisms in the video, I like, I, as I pointed out, I didn't fully agree with, but that's mainly because it didn't bother me when I watched it. They're valid. For me, it was just the other stuff that was m much bigger, much more apparent, that was so distracting. I feel like a lot of the things they mentioned, you can overlook. I think to what you're saying, it's like if the story story is good, if the characters are engaging, yeah. then yeah, crappy VFX or things looking a bit funny or half-baked, it's not going to really bother you because yeah. you're invested in the story. A while ago, uh, an old friend of mine told me that part of the issue with the Pirates of the Caribbean series, and you probably have, have heard me mention this multiple times, you know, in the first film, Jack Sparrow is a side character and that yeah. makes him super enjoyable. The further you go along in the series, he becomes more and more the main character and that actually ruins the franchise. That's part of the major issues with the story in Pirates of the Caribbean as sure. it goes along, right? Kind of the same thing has happened here, I guess, which they pointed out. He was more of this, like, side character that was fun. Yeah. You know, in terms of the greater MCU. And then they made him the main course, which I guess was a big mistake. Like, I actually was excited for what the trajectory was if they managed to maintain the same tone. But I guess that would be impossible to keep that same vibe and spunkiness of part one and part two, given the stakes of the entire thing. So. Exactly. And it was sad as well that we didn't have his fun friends, especially Luis. He was one of my favorite things about the first two movies. He, uh, he was so much fun. Yeah. I think they just kind of wanted to really show like, oh, we have this superhero family. Look at all these, you know, fun characters in the quantum realm and that. And it's like, no, well, we wanted some of his human friends. Sure. Yeah. Overall, you know what I'm saying? Mid. Yeah. 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 Mid. It was okay. <laughs>